some tips in regarding the building of the Pico Ratio Viaduct Kit. Our first job will be to fit the top unit into the side as shown and the inner liner of the stonework. Once this is in position and hardened, the second half should be fitted as shown. Once this is in position, then the liner of stonework can be attached above as shown. This, once it's glued into position, will create a lock for the top unit and will make a pretty sound structure. This should then be left to dry completely as once you start to feed the actual liner, the brick liner of the arch into position, it will need to be quite stable on either side. Now the liner has produced, it comes as a flat moulding and actually on the edge of this moulding you will see there's a very slight raised edge on the recess. Now this happens in every position and will have to be removed to get the liner to slide in position perfectly. So the way to do this is to use a small needle file and just carefully cut down the recess until you take the raised piece off and do this in all four positions. Now once this is done, the next job, and this is the job that most people seem to have difficulty with, is curving the radius and keeping it in position by gently just actually rolling it between your fingers as such. You can see a shape will gradually start to take it doesn't look a lot at first, but once you feel that the actual material has got subtle enough, which it will do, then you can get hold of it and roll it together as such. Just carefully together. And roll it as such like that. Until you feel that you're getting a very slight curvature in position. Now, as you can see, we've got the first of the curvatures there. Now, this is one that has been taken to further advance. It's been rolled on and rolled on several times, so as you can get basically a nice arch in. Though not quite the correct arch that you will need for the kit, it's still a very good advantage for you for actually assembling it. We now have a go at installing the liner. Carefully take it and feed it into the side pieces, feeding down, and then once you're in position, just carefully keep feeding around all the actual pegs which are on the sides. This takes a little bit of getting used to, but, but once you actually get going, you will find then it won't be quite as difficult. Just have to be a little bit careful and a little bit patient with this one. Now this is the hardest part. When you get to the actual bottom, you have to ensure that you go round the right side of the pegs as it will tend to go slightly out of position. Just keep gently keeping the pressure on, but make sure that you keep the side walls as close together as possible so as you keep the actual bridge unit under tension with the liner. We're gradually making our way through. Keep the pressure on the ends and keep the side balls together. And there we have the liner virtually in position. Once this is done, and you're happy with the positions of it at the end, hold the sides together 
and apply glue around the side plate mountings and the actual pins. We'll do one side. And that will do your second side. Just hold them for a brief period, just while the solvent takes. And now do the same at the reverse end. And there we have the bridge liner in position. Now you'll notice that there's a bow between the two side plates. Well this will be taken out when the actual inserts on top of the piers are fitted in position. It automatically pushes everything into the right plane. Right, our next job is to assemble the piers. These are quite straightforward and are glued up in the normal way with just the sides and the front face glued together so you get an actual U-shaped section. And once that hardened off, you put in the front plate, which is as here, and that will make the box section of the pier. Once that's assembled, you then take one of the capping units and then place that between the actual sections at the top. Remembering this is already now a box section. So you can drop that in and then carefully glue it all round. That will give you a very strong pier which will look as you have here. Now the second part of the capping which is the top half you will notice is narrower across this area than the bottom and that's to accommodate the narrowness of the actual arch joints. This will then be placed on the top of the pier as such or you can do it the, the reverse way. You can actually glue the base section onto the arch as shown there. Some people prefer to do this as they find it easier to actually get a glue brush into the back of it. But once that's done then your arch is basically finished and you can assemble it straight on the top onto two piers as such and then you would literally just glue into position.